In 2014, I was diagnosed with a rare form of soft tissue cancer and given three months to live. I was diagnosed at the age of 42 with cervical cancer. In 2004, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. You feel a real loss of control when you have cancer. One thing that I would like to see happening is more of an equal footing between patients and their healthcare professions and more of a recognition that the patient has a voice. What's very special about this project is that it is research questions that have come from patients and their family members, and from doctors and nurses, not necessarily from the research community. Yeah, the process started with three and a half thousand questions. They refine and refine and refine. It's like squeezing a whole load of oranges and you get one can of absolutely superb juice. So we had a very large steering group with over 10 patient and carer representatives, including the charities. We then ended up with a workshop day where we invited patients and carers to come along and thrash it all out. There were tears, there were heated discussions. But in the end, I, I think we have got 10 questions which are of importance to large numbers of people who are living with and beyond cancers. Out of all the priorities, I think the ones that are most important to me are dealing with all aspects of aftercare. The psychological effects of cancer can be devastating. It hits you there at two o'clock in the morning. You're worrying about your treatment. If you've been treated, you're worrying about whether it's going to come back. You have to learn ways of handling it. One of the things that I feel very, very strongly about is um, physical exercise and getting out and doing. Initially, you just feel like, oh my gosh. And at that point, you just kind of fall down a well and think, well, I, I can't do anything. There is nothing that, I, that can change what is going to happen to me. But actually, you can't sustain the misery forever. The two priorities that really stand out for me are the issue of fatigue uh, during and following treatment and then secondly the long-term side effects of treatment, the consequences um, of your treatment. My message to researchers would be to please have a look at these priorities, act upon them and get patients involved in your research. It has to be seen as a call to action. I think of them as a plea from the cancer community that this is what we want. Better communication, less side effects, better counselling and care. We want all those things. We know it's possible. Success for this project for me would simply be more people knowing that there is life with cancer, there is life beyond cancer, and that actually they will be able to have whatever it takes to help them find that life and to find their new normal.